Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another installment in the Horus Heresy series. Games Workshop very kindly sent me out the three beautiful new Horus Heresy assassins for me to make contact with and videos for you guys. And I thought I would start off today's video by uh, doing the Clade Adamas assassin, uh, my personal favorite style. Um, so that's what this video is going to be all about, getting one of these beautiful miniatures painted up very quickly, ready for the tabletop. So stick around guys, enjoy the video. So this is the Clade Adamas Assassin. It took every fiber of my being not to paint him up as Deadpool, but I did manage to resist the urge and paint him up as he's kind of supposed to be. So I sprayed him black and then gave him a Zenithal of Grey Seer. And then I'm gonna start off with a contrast of Storm Fiend. And we're gonna apply this all over the body glove that the Assassin wears. So obviously this is, like I said, an assassin, so he's wearing quite tight-knit gear. He's meant to get in and out of places quite quietly, quite efficiently, get his job done. So he's all about stealth. So we decided to go for the kind of, I don't know, moonlight blue body glove, the kind of thing that would blend into shadows quite well. So Stormfiend was a great choice to start with this. Um, I haven't used Stormfiend a lot before as it's one of the newer contrasts. So I'm trying to get my hand and my head around the uh, new contrast colors and use them as much as possible. Um, and this was a uh, perfect excuse to use this beautiful new blue color. So Stormfiend all over the body glove, trying your best not to hit any of the other parts because we're going to be using different contrasts than that. And Stormfiend is quite dark, so uh, we don't want to uh, cause any staining. Black Templar was used for the black parts and there's only really two black parts on this miniature and that is the casing of his needle liquefier gun thing and then most of the backpack that he wears also has black as well. I went onto the Forge World website and used the 360 of the uh, model um, to look at where the colors are supposed to go and if you do that you will clearly see which parts of the backpack are supposed to be black and which parts are actually metallic and silver and all those kind of bits and pieces. From here I moved over to uh, Flesh Tears Red and this was for all of the parts of the miniature I'm going to be doing with red. So obviously he has these straps that go across his chest are done in red. The And then the sheaths of all his blades are also done in red. So it's quite a large knife on his leg. Um, and then obviously he's drawing his beautiful sword. So the whole sheath of that is mostly red um, and part of the handle is also red too. So just take your time uh, and paint down these particular pieces. Now, because this model is quite dark, as you can see, I'm being a little bit more careful than I normally would be applying my contrasts because all the colors are dark and they will stain each other quite badly and you won't be able to paint over one with another as easy as you would with different schemes. So just try and take your time and uh, be neat with these particular colors. Most of the metallics in this miniature are also actually gold, so although I will be doing the uh, the sheath of his sword, most, I don't know, like the bottom third of the sword and then the top third of the sword is all kind of metallic, so it's only really the middle bit. Do pay attention that there is some kind of ribbony tassel bits that are coming off of the blades. Try and not get any red on these, we're going to be hitting these with a kind of a turquoise color later on. So with the red applied, it's then time to move over to Wildwood. And this is just for the, the kind of straps and buckles and stuff. So the ones holding on his knife. And he also has two um, kind of pouches, one under each armpit. Um, obviously storing ammunition, poison vials, explosives, whatever. An assassin would need to get in and out and do his job. So these were also done with the uh, brown contrast. Lead belch was used for all the metallic parts of the miniature that aren't going to be gold. Um, and to be honest, there's not that much. He, he's quite a blingy assassin. So the rest of the gun I did with a coat of silver. I am going to go over a few of these parts with gold, but I thought it was base, uh, better to just hit them all with a full base coat of silver and then just put a little bit of gold on top of it. And then things like uh, the bottom halves of his grenades hanging off his chest, they're done with silver as well. Most of the mechanism of the grenade is actually in gold signifying that these are no ordinary grenades, quite rare relics of the Imperium, something that members of the Assassin's Guild uh, only have access to. It's time for the Retributor Armor Gold, and this basically is the rest of the miniature is done in gold, so any of the metallic bits that I didn't hit 
we'll get retribute armor so the center of his chest um the hilt pommel um of all of his blades um certain particulates of the liquefier gun the actual needle itself uh some of the mechanism that's on the back side of it and like i said the top halves of the grenades are also done in gold Once I have all these bits done, it was time for some Croxagore scales. And these are for those tassels I was talking about. It's a different shade of blue. Uh, it is quite um, a bright and vibrant color to, compared to the rest of the scheme, but it is what they recommended on the box art. So I'm gonna follow through with that. And once that's done, that is all the base coats applied to the miniature and it's time now to shade it down. So for this, I'm gonna use the new 18 mil pot of Nolan oil, which is a little bit thinner. And I'm gonna apply this all over the miniature which will shade everything down, add really nice shadows um, to all the different pieces and really give you that kind of assassin mood. While the shade is drying on this miniature, as is tradition, I'm gonna get the miniature based up. I'm sticking with the kind of Martian scheme, which is just kind of the irradiated dead zone I'm going for, for like the, the surface of Terra during the actual siege, which is where all my heresy pieces are based. I just think it's a really nice basing scheme and really sets off a bunch of different uh, tones for miniatures as you can see it looks fantastic on this guy okay now that's done it's time to begin the layering process we're going to start back at the body glove and we're going to go for a two scale two stage highlight we're going to start with stegadon scale green and we're going to apply this to uh, most of the body glove just leaving all the dark and deep recesses um, with that black null oil in it This was actually a really, really enjoyable uh, miniature to paint as a piece. Uh, I enjoyed it more than I was expecting and I am very much looking forward to getting the other two assassins painted up. Whether I'll be super keen to use them in a game of Horse Heresy, I'm not sure as I mostly play Imperial Fists. I feel like they may be a little bit too noble and stout world to uh, field assassins, but uh, I suppose I am doing a sense of Horse Army as well, so they could fit quite nicely in there. So like I said, follow around the body glove, hitting all of the raised areas. From there, I thought it was a little bit too dark. I just wanted to make a pop just a little bit more. So I went back to second on scale green and I just put a touch of Thousand Suns blue in just to give me a slightly brighter blue. And I just got the, the most raised areas, the tops of creases, the kind of like top of his head, the top of muscles, all the bits pointing up. Just add a little bit more kind of vibrancy and brightness to the, uh, the body suit without making it scream too much that it, you know, he's gonna be caught in the corner of a room in two seconds when he's supposed to be sneaking around. And once again, I thought this step actually added quite a lot and I was really happy with the body glove as it was now. And I was comfortable leaving it at this point. We're gonna go in and use fist on red, just add a quick uh, highlight to all the red parts that we use the Flesh tears red contrast on. Straps on his chest, sheaths to follow the blades, that kind of thing. Just a, a quick kind of almost like stippling, scratching effect across those pieces. We don't want it to be like gaudy, screaming red. As you can see, I'm just stabbing at the pieces. Not wanting a solid coat of red. Getting in for the straps on his handle of his sword is also one of those things you got to be careful you don't hit the inside of his hand or any bits like that. Ranox hide was used to uh, layer up all those straps that we did the, uh, the contrast brown on at the beginning. Once again, very quick, simple highlights. These are parts of the miniature that nobody's going to pick up and be like, oh, you did a really nice job on these random straps that hold on. No. Face, all those beautiful weapons, the cross section on his chest. These are the things that people are going to be looking at and where you want to spend the majority of your time. From here we moved over to Corvus Black and that was just to layer up those black parts. So once again, the casing of his liquid fire slash needle gun. I actually don't know what equipment he's carrying. I haven't actually looked at the rules for him. But a quick highlight on those two pieces. We 
do hope you guys are enjoying the video as of right now if you are um and you want me to do another one of the assassins uh, please drop in the comments below which one of the two other ones which was the Infocyte and the uh, Venom Assassin. Those are the others two I have at my disposal. And if you'd like me to do a video on one, just let me know. Iron Breaker was used um, for the highlighting of all the metallic areas. So like I've been doing in a bunch of my other videos, and um, both gold and silver was highlighted this way. With the silver, it's just a traditional highlight. With the gold, it's more the kind of scratchy dot highlights, just hitting kind of sharp points and edges of the model. And um, really does make that gold pop. Makes it look like you put a lot of work in, even though it really didn't. It takes about two seconds to do across the miniature. This makes highlighting metallic parts of a miniature super fast. When you can stick to that one main primary color. This is the Assassin as it's finally finished. I'm absolutely in love with this guy. Can't wait to throw him on my shelf next to the rest of my horse heresy miniatures. And here he is as he's storming across no man's land. Nobody seeing him, hunting for his target and ready to wreak havoc. Okay guys, and there we have it. One Horse Heresy Assassin painted up and ready for the battlefield. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Ask me any questions you like below in the comments and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. If for some crazy reason you haven't already subscribed to my channel, it would mean the world to me if you took two seconds out of your day and hit that subscribe button. And if you like what I do, want to support me creating all this crazy content and getting bigger and bigger, the best way if you do that is to check out my links for my Patreon below. Thank you guys so much for watching today in the video. I'll see you in the next one.